Hello guys! Today it's time to set up our bullet journals for June. I can't believe this is the last theme in my current bullet journal. This has definitely been the weirdest year ever. But anyway, we're gonna start this video as we usually do here with a recap of the previous month. I'm so happy many of you seem to like this cute May theme. I definitely enjoyed using this layout as well, but it kind of made me crave some darker tones and more mysterious designs, so that's what I decided to bring back for this June theme. We have so much to go through as always, so we are jumping right into the cover page drawing, which is this crawling tiger surrounded by some dark jungle leaves. So I guess a dark jungle would be a good way to describe this month's theme. And this tiger drawing was the first thing that came to my mind when I was brainstorming ideas for it. We are starting with a pencil sketch and I started this whole thing from the tiger itself and then drew all this stuff surrounding it later. Tiger is probably not the easiest animal to draw, so this is perfect for those of you who are looking for some challenge. I had to redraw and correct the shape of the eyes and the face overall a few times, because first I was kind of drawing everything too far from each other and making the face too big. One really good thing to start to pay attention to is if you find yourself making similar mistakes consistently. So for example for me, I often draw the part between the eyes and nose too long for some reason, but because I realized that it's a mistake that I often do, I can now be more aware of it while I'm drawing and correct it before it's too late. But after our pencil sketch is detailed enough, we can start to go over the lines with our black pen. I usually like to start from the darkest areas because that feels a little bit more comfortable and then little by little you can build the darkness and line work around the other areas as well. I use my black pen also to create the stripes on the tiger's face, which is a very important part of the whole tiger. So I would say definitely pay attention to the directions and shapes of the stripes as well, and then also kind of map out the areas of the fur that are completely white. You'll notice tigers have some white spots under and over their eyes, then on the lower and further parts of their face. So paying attention to that will help a lot in the coloring process and eventually make your tiger look much more realistic. So after I had the face mainly sketched out and some initial guidelines for the legs and back, I started to color the tiger using my Tombow brush pens and my brush pen blender. I tried to use as little water as possible and started with this very light sand color to add this little grayness to the fur before going in with the brighter colors. Studying the colors from a real picture really helps to find the dark and light areas, so that's exactly what I was doing here and just slowly work my way forward. Before completely finishing the tiger, I wanted to move on to the background first, so I knew how dark I should go with the colors. So I started to sketch these different tropical leaves around the tiger and created almost this box that I wanted to frame the whole thing. Honestly, this background took me ages in real life, but for the sake of time, I'm really speeding this process in the video. But just know that it wasn't as easy for me either as it looks here. Anyway, after drawing out these leaves, I added a light layer of color to them with watercolors this time because I wanted to have all different tones of green in them. I think working with a pretty small brush will help with all the narrow shapes.
Then after the first layers of color on the leaves, I got this idea to add a black background to this whole thing, which ended up being a much more difficult process than I thought. So first I started to color the background with a black watercolor and I was trying to fade it towards the middle but that didn't really work. There were just too many details going on here. So then I just picked my black Tombow Furenosuke and colored the whole thing black. Leaving out all these leaves took so much time and was much more difficult than I thought, but I ended up liking the end result a lot, so I'm really happy that I challenged myself with this. So after the background was done, I added some final shadows and darkness to the tiger and darkened the leaves as well. This probably took the longest time I've ever used on an illustration in my bullet journal, but I'm really happy I did it. I wasn't completely happy with the tiger's legs, they ended up looking kind of weird to me, but the face turned out okay, which was the main thing. For those of you who are interested, a digital version of this theme will be available on my Etsy shop and as a small bonus, you can now get 20% off of the whole digital selection there. This sale is only till the end of May, so if you've been eyeing out something there, now's the time. The link to the shop is in the description, but now let's move on with the video. Then as a final detail, I wrote this small calendar to finish this whole cover spread before moving on to the next one. So next we're gonna set up a monthly spread and I started this one by setting all the functional stuff before moving on to the decorations. I drew a quick monthly calendar first and kept it pretty small this time. I haven't really used it that much in the past few months so I thought there's no need to take up a lot of space with it. I drew the calendar inside of this box and each day here has two times two dots of space. Then under the calendar I wrote June again just to fill the empty space here. I also felt like this needed some color but the decorations are gonna be pretty heavy on this spread as well so I decided to just go with this light gray color to balance everything out. Then on the next page I wanted to set a social media posting calendar for myself so I can keep on track of everything I'm gonna post or have already posted. I don't know if this is that functional for all of you but this type of calendar could be for any other stuff as well that you like to track during your month. To be honest, I should probably set something like this for my house cleaning. I've been playing with that idea, but I'm not ready for it yet. <laughs> Later I added some drop shadows to these boxes to make them look just slightly more interesting. But before that, let's move on to this jungle decoration on the top left of this spread. So if we crossed off a tiger on the cover page, next I wanted to draw a black panther. I was a little bit hesitate with this to be honest because it's quite scary to draw something that's completely black but I decided to try it out anyways. So I started by sketching this very well especially since the pose was a little bit challenging and I had to keep modifying it to get to the place I wanted. I think it's helpful to almost study the muscles and the anatomy of the animal when you're drawing a picture like this because it helps you to find those larger shapes and lines that will eventually make it easier to get the legs and everything else right. It will also help later when you are coloring the animal because the muscles will indicate the places of the highlights and shadows. After this sketch, I started the painful coloring part. <laughs> I used my watercolors for this again because I don't really trust my black Tombow for drawings like this. And instead of starting with a pure black, I started from these lighter gray tones. I even mixed in some sepia brown 
and slowly build my way up. Black watercolor is a little bit tricky to work with because it looks quite opaque when you first lay it down, but the color fades quite a lot when it dries. So keeping that in mind, I started to work with light layers, trying not to blend too much or use too much water to keep my bullet journal page in one piece. In some point, I thought I really needed to sharpen up some of the lines a bit with my black pen, and I think it really helped to tell the shapes apart better. So when the panther was almost done, I quickly threw something to the background. So I didn't spend too much time here and just added a light layer of this dusty green here first. And then I created some of these tree shapes to kind of create the idea of a jungle. I spent a little bit more time on this tree branch that the panther is walking on and then I just finished everything up with some very loose leaves and by adding some final shading to the panther. So after this picture was done, I added some of that light green around the boxes as well to kind of give them this shadow almost and I think it just brought some balance to this otherwise pretty minimal spread. So I think we are now ready to move on and next we are going to set up a monthly goals page that will help us to define the most important things we want to accomplish. I started this page with a title again. I hope you're not getting tired of this same cursive font. I should probably change it up sometimes. But anyway, after the title, the first thing I wanted to have on this page were just three monthly goals that definitely have to get done in June. I've really tried to limit my goals and task lists in the past few months and I felt like it has been super helpful even if it sometimes feels like I'm not getting much done at all. I know I'm not alone with this but it's just so easy to fall into that zero to perfect mindset and not honestly thinking how much time and energy some task actually takes. So keeping that in mind, I also only left half a page for my master to-do list in June and I'm really trying to not feel this on the first day of the month. Before we jump to the next page, let's focus on this middle part here where we are gonna draw some jungle leaves again. I don't draw detailed leaves that often, so I definitely had to find some inspiration online and again start with some good sketches. I see all these people online just creating perfect leaves and flowers out of nothingness, but I'm not one of those people and if you're not either, we can always take it slow and cheat our way to the top. So anyway, I tried to create some different shapes of leaves. Some of these are kind of like palm leaves, then there are some banana leaves in there, and then finally some monsteras. So after having all these shades on the paper, I took out my black pen again and used the same technique to color the background black as I did on the cover page. I think this dark background really suited this theme, so even if it was super tedious to draw again, the end result was worth it. I probably had to put that in like 90 times speed while editing, but anyway, after the black background was done, I reached for my watercolors again to color these leaves in. To get that nice dark jungle green, I added quite a lot of turquoise with my green colors, and then to just add some variation, I kept some of the leaves a little bit more bright and yellowish tone. There's really no right or wrong way to color these. I didn't spend too much time here, as you can probably see, but I still really like the end result. Then let's quickly finish up the right side of this page before moving on. So I wanted to first leave some space for books I want to read this month. I've been a little bit lazy with reading actual books recently, so I hope this little section will help me with that. And then below that I wrote this learn about title. So I'll write one topic I want to learn something about in June and then to actually make myself do it, I added this notes section here where I can summarize what I've learned. So 
So that's it for this more functional spread and now let's move on for something a little bit more quick and easy. I realized I haven't set up a brain dump page in a while and I've kind of missed it a little bit so that's what I reserved this whole page for. There won't be anything interesting happening on this page so I decided to instead show you a little bit slower how I usually create all my titles. I always write the titles out first with a pencil so that I get them in the middle of the page and also sometimes I like to test out different styles for certain letters a bit. Then I just go over it with my black pen and I think in this point doing quite quick strokes is very helpful. If you try to create slow lines they can get a little bit more wiggly easier. So that's why writing your letters with these quick confident strokes is the best way to go. Then so that we wouldn't have a totally blank page I just created this quick border around it. So I added these small circles to the corners and then by using two thickness of my micron pens I created these lines around the page. I wasn't completely sure what I wanted to set up for the second page here and I was kind of running out of time so I just decided to leave this empty for now. I'll share this page later on my Instagram and also I'll of course show it in the next month's flip through. So skipping that takes us directly to the weekly pages of June. I've been so into the whole Dutch store weeklies for the past months now that I still couldn't let it go. So if this is the first time you hear about that, the point of a Dutch store layout is that you don't need to set up the whole spread every week, but just the daily boxes. There are different layout options for this, but I decided to set the boxes to the center part of the pages and then we'll later cut out the extra part from the right side. The thing I love about this as well is that if we now do a drawing on the sides, we can enjoy the whole month without the pressure of drawing something new every week. There were eight spaces so I just left the last one for a small weekly review. I've actually been writing a separate diary recently so I don't need that much space for it but some kind of quick weekly recap is usually very beneficial for me. So when we reached the last weekly page I wanted to squeeze my happy tracker in here that actually fit perfectly to this empty vertical space. I like to use small symbols for the habits whenever I need to save space and I think it also adds a cute look to the pages. The 7 plus boxes will be for the days I slept more than 7 hours which is something I consistently need to track or else I won't do it. Oops. <laughs> I was pretty amazed that I could actually fit the whole thing to this space but that happened to be all the space I actually needed. After that let's draw some final leaf decorations on this empty space on the left side so we can get this weekly spread to look a bit cuter and also match the rest of the theme. I think you probably get the idea by now but I started again by sketching some of these palm leaves with a pencil then I created the final lines with a black pen before coloring them in with my watercolors. You can play with the lightness and darkness of the green tones a little bit to add some shadows to these leaves and I kind of did it by darkening either the tips or the center parts of the leaves and then also leaving the other sides of the leaves slightly lighter than the other. I think small things like that are just easy ways to add some life to your drawings. But that's it about the weekly setup and now we only have the final spread left of this June layout. I always end my monthly setups with a monthly review and June won't be any different. I think especially this month is also a great opportunity to take a look at the goals you set up in the beginning of this year since we are in the middle point of the year 2020. I know I still can't get over that either. 
even if you didn't have the most productive start of this year like who did honestly we still have plenty of time left to get back to those goals and at least pick some of them to focus on for the rest of the six months we have left it might also be beneficial to kind of review the goals you set and see if something has changed or not. And if something has changed, don't be afraid of changing your goals a bit to fit your current life better. There's no shame in doing that. Anyway, I think these pages are always pretty self-explanatory. The goal is just to get myself to think back and see where I did well and what areas need improvement moving forward. But after this very functional spread is done, it finally finishes up this monthly setup. I really enjoy playing with these darker tones and creating these jungle inspired decorations. And I really hope you got some ideas from this as well. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I'll jump to a new notebook from next month. And that means there will also be a half year notebook setup video coming very soon. So definitely stay tuned for that. If you are new here and you are not a subscriber yet, becoming one would of course be highly appreciated. But I think that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And see you in my next one. Bye bye.